Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48th World where we get down and we talk about celebrities. Especially celebrities that just don't make sense. Now these two celebrities are, what can I say, synonymous with comedy and making you laugh. They both had their lanes and whatnot, but Bernie Mac, the Mac, Mac, man, man, he got everybody i feel in every culture every race together and <clears throat> he just made them laugh now if anybody could go and make fun and kiki and jokes on the royal family it would be this man he would get a pass because he knew how to talk about white people european british africans uh asians he didn't care he said jokes was jokes, funs was funs, and he didn't get too much into the afterthought of how embarrassing it can be for him clowning on a particular coach or a race. But anybody that saw Bernie Mac's show, whoo, he had every type of ethnicity or race pretty much in his sitcom, his television show. He didn't care who you were. People were people. He saw people as people. Individuals. You got your bad ones. You got the good ones. And, and that's pretty much how he saw uh, people in general. He didn't have no, uh, you know, no pics or no likes. He just loved people and loved entertaining. But honey, big old said, I tell you. I don't know what to say. I mean, said your lane is, <sighs> I don't know, black family black family oriented in a way uh i know you tried to cross over and get into the lane that bernie max solidified a long time ago and even i tell you the truth cat williams probably could have did a better job and it landed on point but it seemed like said was struggling he was over there entertaining the british people uh I don't know if it was at the Met Gallery. It could have been some kind of war show. He could have been at the Met Gallery. But anyway, yeah, Cat Williams. <laughs> Shy, him and Cat Williams had a falling out way back when, when Cat Williams thought Sid had stole some of his entertainment. Now, it could be questionable because Sid is quite older than Cat, and Cat could have been misinformed. But Cat, pretty much, he be trying everything. You know what I'm saying? So he might have got lost in the sauce somewhere. <coughs> and uh, might have kind of over speculated that said had stole some of his material but even i'm having my felicia rashad my whitney houston face like what the hell was he trying to do there's a certain line it's a certain tone you have to go when you messing with different cultures and trying to do jokes on them and i'm like whitney hell to the no hell to the no 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 said shouldn't have been up there trying to make a no. new no jokes about the Roy family. And I'm like, Whitney, you look like a fool, said. You look like a complete fool. Sitting up there trying to pick fun of an interview that Oprah did with uh, Oprah. Did with uh, the newly uh, wed um, Archie's dad. What his name? I don't forgot the man's name. But Meghan Markle and Harry, yeah. Oh, he was making jokes on that interview that was a very serious interview that Megan was going through because she felt the royal family was not behind her. Didn't back her up enough. You know, they were trying to make fun of her or distance themselves to her or not give her the correct uh, respect she deserved in the royal family. I don't know because you know, Megan was up there trying to do her own thing and she... Pretty much for trying to book the system like Princess Diana. She just wanted to be herself. And that's how a lot of people see uh, Megan as a, a Princess Diana step in. Because, you know, Prince, but Princess Diana had real good class about herself. She loved people, especially the church. She always was taking up money for them, going and visit them, and it's, it's all that kind of stuff. Whoo, honey. It was just her ex-husband, Charles, cutting the fool and going around having fast and stuff like that. And then wanted to be with Camille. Okay. Ooh, I tell you the truth. But anyway. Yeah, I said we're making fun of something that was not fun to be poked at. Because uh, it did have some aspects of messing with Megan's Markle mental health. Uh, how they were treating her and how she felt on a daily basis. About what she get herself into. This, that, and the third. But that's nothing here nor there. I'm sure you had a 
glimpse of his life, Megan, meaning Harry and the royal family, to even ascertain what your life could be like if you got into that marriage. So you got into it, so you got to live. I just say you got to lie in your bed, honey. You wanted it. You wanted all that smoke. You wanted all that fame. You wanted all that uh, royalty access. Okay, you got it now. You see, they just live in a fishbowl, just like fishbowl, just like regular celebrities. Okay, but you didn't want all that smoke. Huh, but let's go on and see what the sun had reported on this uh, debacklement of a uh, entertainment or show. Um, Say it was trying to get to the royal family, which you know the queen she looking like. Hoppo, where we get this man from? What, what, who, where is he from? He does, co he does comedy. What? I, I don't think he understand what we do. We have proper place. We have settings. We have tones, and he's broken all the rules. <laughs> I bet. Woo! The queen wanted to say, behead him quickly, quick, fast, in a hurry. Please behead him, or put him in a dungeon until he has come back and apologized to us, because this just wasn't fitting for us. Child, please stay this on that royal family hit list as we speak. But anyway, we go into the U.S. Sun. Um, it was the Emmy Awards, the Emmys to 2021. I know it had to be something. So he was hosting, calling himself hosting the Emmy. Uh, M M Emmys uh, for 2021. Okay, but they go on and title it uh, Royal Blush Emmys 2021. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle humiliated as Cedric the Entertainer roast them over Oprah Winfrey interview. Okay, see now Bernie Mac, he would have took that whole scenario and turned it into pure gold. You know, he was with some heavy hitters. You know, he was up there with oh, Brad Pitt. And that was a Damon. It wasn't Damon Dash. Damon somebody. And dog, I can't think of that man that uh <laughs> married that uh lawyer. God, I can't think of his name. Y'all know Ocean's Eleven, the one that uh called himself uh trying to steal everything. Uh, that was very highly expensive. Uh, very lucrative type jewels and stuff of that nature. Can't think of his name. But if y'all saw any of Ocean Elevens, y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, dark skin, uh, Caucasian man with the well, not dark skin. He had black, silky hair. Kind of remind me of Patrick Ewan, not Patrick Ewan, but Patrick Riley, uh, of the Lakers back in the day with suave looking self. Who child? But anyway, that was a fine man. That was fine as man. But anyway, going back to Bernie Mac and how he would have transcended his whole performance, uh, trying to roast the royal family with his way of doing it. Man, Bernie Mac would have tore that stage up. They would have been laughed. They would say, can you come back? But even the Queen probably would have invited him back. He would have had a standing open invitation to come back. Anytime she wanted a chit-chat or get her a kiki or ha-ha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She probably said, get the Mac man. Get the Mac man on the line. Get the Mac man on the line. I need him to come and cheer me up. You know what I'm saying? Who could Bernie Mac was one of them folks that you could just talk to him about anything. You know, it's more like a friend or a friend of the family or a, a, a cousin or something. You know, an uncle, brother. You know, you can sit down and talk to him. But I don't know what said going with none of this. None of what he had did on September uh, 2021. Okay, that's when the story was put out. And the person who wrote it was, uh, I want to say, Mrs. Braddock. Okay. But she put the story out on the 20th. Okay, that's today at 3.59 Eastern Standard Time. And she goes on to say, Cedric the Entertainer humiliated Prince Harry and Meghan Markle last night as he roasted the couple over their bombshell chat with Oprah Winfrey. I'm sure y'all all remember that major interview they did. And it was centered around uh, mental health and how she was feeling and how she felt the royal family was treating her at the time. Uh... But going back to the article, it says the 2021 Emmy Awards host, 57, told the star-studded ceremony in Los Angeles, as great as the crown is, it pales in comparison to the real Marnacci. Okay, but I'm like, can't we? I'm like, say it. What are you doing up there? Get your butt down, get your butt down from that stage. You're embarrassing us all. Not just your race, but you're you embarrassing the whole comedian world. Okay? Or the comedy world, I should say. And Felicia Rashad, hashtag... Oh, uh, Mrs. Claire Hustable and Whitney Houston. 
they like, man, you're an embarrassment. You are an embarrassment, and you need to come down off that stage. And I'm right, I'm right with Whitney Houston. Hell to the no. Say, what you doing up there? You're embarrassing everybody. Not just your race, but you're embarrassing the comedy world at its best. All right. Ooh, you look like a fool, see? You look like a fool. Ooh. But anyway, moving back on, I'm getting back off topic, getting back into the um, commentary the lady wrote up in her article. She said, the comedian continued, I mean that Oprah interview with Prince Harry and Meghan, that was a real tea right there, wasn't it? The Duke and Duchess of Sussex explosive Oprah interview was watched by more than 49 million people globally in the first three days after it aired. It saw the couple raise a number of controversial issues concerning their life in the royal family. Now, I don't know who, who really, well, you, they said 49 million, but I wasn't one of them, okay? <laughs> it was 49 million people watching that uh three-day part interview, uh, but it wasn't me. It wasn't me, and I'm pretty sure it was a lot of other people that wasn't watching it either. It's just you what it is. But anyway, going back to the article, it says, Cedric revealed his shock at Prince Harry, and Meghan claimed that a member of the royal family had questioned how dark their son Archie's skin tone was going to be. Okay, and that could have happened. You know what I'm saying? They ain't mean for it to get out. But, you know, they look like they, you know... They need some. They really do. Because they, they kind of look like like white piece of paper. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's good. It's good that Harry wanted to get out, go to L.A., get that sun, get him a little tan going on. But, uh, yeah, Megan, you kind of took a lot of your um, skin color from your father. Okay? From your dad. You really did. Because, you know, both of them, they kind of look like they're white, right? We know Harry white. But, you know, Megan can go straight for white, too. She can be white or black, however she want to, depending on uh, what circle she's traveling in. Okay? There's a lot of black people back in the day that were just that white. And they wanted to pass as white because of all the privileges they got back there in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. They needed to look that part. If they wanted the best jobs, if they wanted to be in certain social uh, realms or, or of society, if they wanted to um, get into certain schools and educate themselves a little further than their darker counterparts, child, please, I know y'all saw that movie, Imitation of Life. I know y'all did. That dog on Sarah Jane up there got a black mama, and I guess she was messing with a white man. I don't know. That's just my belief. But uh, yeah, and Sarah Jane came looking just all white until you know. People wanted to get to know her a little bit better. And she was trying to shun her mama because, you know what I'm saying, her mama was a maid and a caregiver and all that kind of stuff. And she wanted to be that color. She wanted to be in that line. Like, she wanted to be up there with them and not, you know, look down upon. So, you know, I'm like, did you not think about that when uh, you married uh, Prince Harry? Okay, do you see any white people? I mean, any black people running around there other than servants, maybe? And then they have really white servants, okay? British servants over there. Okay, British Europeans. But anyway, going back to the article, it said, Megan must put it on that boy. Well, Megan must put it on that boy because he renounced his throne quicker than Eddie Murphy in coming to America. He said, I can't believe they were talking about little Archie. How dark that little baby gonna be? Okay, that was the big issues that were surrounding Megan and what she had heard and how she felt about it and how Harry, Prince Harry had felt about it. And, you know, I'm like, okay, all right. Well, shouldn't y'all have had that talk long back when y'all were dating child? <laughs> and then if you still wanted to marry, you knew it's going to be some uneasy people, you know, about mm, what we're going to do if he turns out to be a little chocolate chip cookie or little carmel um you know <laughs> what, what we gonna do what, what, have, do we have any rules and regulations for that she should have had that forethought right but anyway like i said burning mat would have turned that into a pure gold spun it into a pure gold where well, everybody came out laughing about it even if it wasn't funny at that particular time but going back to the article it said um said you took another jab at the family and said they would need archie to teach the royals how to dance he said they need little Archie. Charles can't dance. Who else gonna teach them how to tick tock? I can just see it now. Baby Archie with the queen like, come on, grandma. 
Josh O'Connor and the other members of the Crown cast were seen on camera looking sheepish as Cedric joked on the stage the Metro reports. Prince Harry and Meghan's uh <coughs> Prince Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview lost out on an Emmy Award to Stanley to to Cucci's Italian food show just days after it was booed at the <coughs> NTAs. The couple's chat was up against Stanley Touche searching for Italy and my next guest needs no introduction with Dave Letterman is the best host nonfiction series category. And I'm like, why would they want to win something uh, that exposed how detrimental the... Uh, royal family can be towards race relations you know what i'm saying or how they proceed regarding their thoughts on other races so why would we want oprah to win a pulitzer surprise or any type of award you know because it was definitely an interview that pretty much shamed the royal family because a lot of people you know got to see another side or got to hear another perspective of how people of different races may or may not be treated over there and you know megan was kind of pretty much telling it all so i mean i, I really don't know i'm like cat Williams, like <laughs> could you have come up with some other type of material like picked on megan because she couldn't cook you know she black she should know how to fry up that chicken you know something like that you know feed the man some soul food give him a little culture in his life because we know he's up there on tea and crumpets all the time he don't know nothing about no soul food no fried chicken you know what i'm saying no mashed potatoes with that gravy smothered all up in there them hot biscuits or rolls Woo, child it could have been something like this you didn't have to go all off the deep end talking about the race relations okay but anyway that was my spin going back to the article it said um the oprah interview saw Harry speaking of the rift between him and his father, which at one point he said led to Prince Charles not taking my calls. The couple also accused Buckingham Palace of playing down Meghan's suicidal thoughts and said they decided to step away from royal life as a result of the issues. Some 500 nominees and guests gathered on a glam up tent in downtown Los Angeles for the 73rd annual Emmy Awards on Sunday with COVID precautions including a vaccine requirement and testing. Big subtitle said, Bad Jokes. Cedric the Entertainer, the crowd with jokes about the fact guests had to be double jabbed in order to attend. He, uh, We have to get Vax to come here. I did not have a reaction like Nicki Minaj cousin. I got the Pfizer. That's the Neiman Marcus of vaccines. Moderna is Macy's. And the Johnson & Johnson is TJ and Max. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he did better talking about the COVID uh, situation. All right. He did better talking about big O, Ovid out there than talking about the royal family. Okay. We're moving on. Moving on. But some viewers of the 2021 Emmy Awards slammed Cedric for his bad jokes. Many fans claim that the whole skits and jokes were painful to watch. Um... Cedric came to the award shows prepared with plenty of jokes and sketches, though many did not land. I'm pretty sure if you were talking about the royal family, well, none of them, you wasn't going to make a bullseye hit. No, 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 no. But a man wouldn't did no mess like that. Okay, he wouldn't have did no mess like that. But you went straight forward, thought you were going to get some lands, and all that you got was pure uh, failures, uh, failed attempts. Uh, who don't pass go? Okay, put in jail type of sentencing on your jokes but that was just me my sidebar you know i have them here and there okay going back to the article it says um as the host delivered his jokes viewers took to twitter to slam the comedian for his role role as host one person wrote yo cedric is bombing right now another added i love cedric but cbs promos disguised as skits are painful to watch just bad a third chimed in, Cedric is sinking fast, faster than the Titanic. Now, you know what I'm saying? Big as Cedric is. <laughs> you would think he would float. You would think he would float, float on, float on, float on. But child, uh-uh. No, he's sunk faster than the Titanic, they said. But going back, they said the backlash continues as Emmy's viewers added, I don't find Cedric that entertaining. <laughs> 
Now they 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 hit a uh, 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 one out the park when they said that one. They don't find Cedric the entertainer entertaining. That's what they said, y'all. <laughs> But anyway, that's all I had on this story. Like I said, only a few people can get away with that. They may be uh, Fred Sanford, Red Fox. You probably could have, uh, 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 what's his name? He used to be with the Rat Pack. Sammy Davis Jr. You probably could have him get away with some jokes. And definitely, you would definitely have Bernie Mac. You know, and I ain't just trying to put him up on no high totem pole. But the brother was good. That's all that I could say. Bernie Mac could get away. Yes, he could with saying in and everything. And it did not make people mad. It made them laugh and feel good. Uh, the laughter was just good with uh, Bernie Mac. All right. But remember, as always, all things work together for our good. For those who love God. All right. Or love the Lord. That's Romans 8 and 28. So, it doesn't matter. So they don't make Cedric a bad man. He just shouldn't mess with no race relations. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And no mental health issues. And made him to be a joke. Now, Bernie Mac, he could have turned that whole scenario into something powerful, entertaining, and salacious at times. Okay? But this is how Bernie Mac got down. He, uh, You know, I ain't going to say it was his time. Because, you know, the Lord come get us whenever he feels like it. Because we were just gifts. Uh, to our loved ones but i really felt that he just died too soon just too soon he was at his prime he was at his prime job Ooh, and a lot of caucasian people love that man Ooh, they love them love them love them but I, I still can't think of that man's name but it was brad pitt and his little crew uh he had in oceans 11 if anybody can think about it all right but that's all I have for this particular video. Video, okay? Y'all want to get down with me? Want to see a lot more? Just spread me out. Spread me out. Like my videos. Share them with your friends, family, or foes. Don't matter. They need to like a little uh, kiki haha -ha sometimes. And if you love it, subscribe to my channel. Alright, but I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.